of faith and science. Henry Colton said, until spiritually awakened, the animals that become your are like separate to the world. He believes that what he sees is reflected in the mirror of the lower line is the only world. Heraclitus said, much knowledge of things that the mind escapes us through one of faith. I love teaching in a science and technology school. You ask your students the classic medieval question, how many angels can dance on the head of a pin? And they say, hmm, angels are hyperdimensional beings. How many lights can go through a point, an infinite number? How many angels can dance on the head of a pin? Angels have more than three dimensions, therefore the answer is an infinite number. My students can do the math. That must be a challenge for the philosophy professors in college. I share with my students that for me, science, religion, and philosophy tell the same story. In my experience, whenever they don't, it's always politics. I mean, the universe doesn't need our opinions to regulate its laws. At a wholesale club, I recently bought over a pound of Jamaican Blue Mountain coffee for less than $10. This <laughs> is it truly Blue Mountain? My purchase was based on faith. But there is an answer to this question that can be based on observation. A researcher can investigate the coffee and determine if it's authentic. Before I was born, my father had a serious accident, falling 16 feet from splitting his head open, requiring 75 stitches. He was in a coma for three weeks. The doctors didn't know if he would regain consciousness. He awoke from the coma. The nurses found him crawling on the floor, looking for a tooth he had lost. He was also calling my mother's name, although they weren't to meet for yet another year. The nurses found to the figure he so had his mind. What agency informed him, my father, of his future name? To him, the soul is more than a myth, but it is beyond the realm of scientific observation. Yet to those who believe, there is evidence of the soul. It is a matter of faith is something that cannot be observed. Paul of Tarsus said, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. I know it's true because I read it on your reading card. <laughs> what can be determined? What can be determined scientifically? And what is indeterminate? I checked my notes with a friend who was a quantum physicist, a mathematician, and a textbook author. You may know him. We had a discussion on indeterminacy and the types of things that are beyond the observable or quantum. To be self-consistent, science must admit it was only with that which is either observable or testable. We spoke about Einstein's statement, God doesn't throw dice. And Hawking's response, not only does God definitely throw dice, but he sometimes confuses us by throwing them behind a corner where we all kind of can't be seen. The answer to the question of determinacy is still up in the air. Presently, science believes that, contrary to Einstein, nothing is behind the quantum veil. The Golden Spectre theorem denies hidden variables behind and beyond the quantum limit. John Bell's theory of non locality concludes that even God is bound by the uncertainty principle. From this, scientists concluded that our that which shapes the universe is not deterministic, it is free will. At a recent check, 178 scholarly articles cite works that prove the Golden Center theorem. But 110 articles cite works in which measurement disproves the Golden Center theorem. Firstly, I love it. To me, it means that indeterminacy cannot be determined. It's a matter of faith. Carl Young explained coincidences using what he called the a possible connecting principle, or synchronicity, a pattern of connections that cannot be explained by causality. I have a story from the Wikipedia on it. One of the examples of synchronicity involves Paul Pudding. This is the true story of the French writer, Emile Deschamps, who in 1805 
distributed to some plum pudding by the stranger, Monsieur de Franchigny. Ten years later, he encounters plum pudding on the menu of a Paris restaurant, and wants to order some. But the waiter tells him the last dish has already been served to another customer. It turns out to be Monsieur de Franchigny. Many years later, 1832, Emilio Schaub is at dinner and once again is offered plum pudding. He recalls the earlier incident and tells his friends that only a certain function was missing to make the setting complete. And in the same instant, now seeing how a certain function wanders into the room on his day. And because synchronicity is not testable, science does not believe it deals with hard facts. Those who study coincidences say that science deals only with reproducible events that are independent of the surface. But the quantum theory complicates the matter. By definition, synchronicity is a function of the observer. Science can not dismiss it, though, because quantum theory is also connected with our solution. Let me assume that everyone knows the way that the matter dwell they can discuss in quantum mechanics, so I can jump ahead to show you his cat. And the last assistant from the Unborn Philosopher's Guild. <laughs> in the famous thought experiment, the developers of quantum mechanics put cat in a box, the castle of Sinai. A particle shot with a double opening in the box. As the wave passes between both gates at once, as a particle, it can only pass through one. One of the gates triggers the breaking of the side of the castle. The question is asked, is the cat alive or is it dead? Quantum reality of the cat says that it is birth. The wave function collapses to a discrete outcome only when observation takes place. So the cat's fate exists in both realities until some loss. In Copenhagen, the founders of the quantum mechanics stated in the orthodox view that everything has only a probability of existence until it is measured or observed. Observation collapses the way of possibilities into material outcomes. So the quantum functions are possibilities. When people make choices, they form the boundaries to their future possibilities. In the sense that they form the future, they will experience. The act of choosing or observing sets boundaries around the various future possibilities. I've shared with some of my students the story of how I met my wife. I was in a restaurant at the days in across from the Gulf of New York. I always sit in the cafeteria because this girl came to talk to anyone else who sits in the cafeteria. I looked across the room to a table of women sitting together. I'm not normally in a circle, but I saw a sphere of light around the edge of and then I saw a pink sweater, and then I saw her eyes. It was like electricity jumping between us. I knew her, but I had never met her in her life. She saw something too. Was it all of her sight? I'm not sure. Because the knowing scared us both. What communication allows us to know that we do each other? Leo Tolstoy said, Faith is the force of life. The classic joke running around school from time to time is whether it has excellent or regretted with it. The answer usually involves the very good thing that says the cow is frozen over. But it's the wrong question. In Dante's Inferno, at the bottom of hell, the devil is suspended head first in the lake of ice. The third law of quantum, of the third law of dynamics, defines the state of zero entropy as the perfect crystal at zero Kelvin. This is the bottom of the universe, zero degrees of freedom, only one possible state of existence. Dante describes this state through the mythic literary consciousness. Death is zero degrees of freedom like the ultimate hell, trapped forever without the possibility of change. Hell is not an end of the or an of them, but rather hell is the state of zero entropy. Reading in both science and 
the scriptures, I often find what appears to be science is expressed through the mythic symbology of the former day. So for me, the best minds of any age tell their stories through the medium of the day. Science, religion, and philosophy tell the same story. Last year, a student shared a vivid dream with me. He said that while he was dreaming it, he noticed exactly 18 years into the future. He was observing masses of people around their hearts just an all white glowing witness. He shared that he had seen his dreams before, but previously each person had been individualized colors. In 2030, he looked at the fact that I was producing clone like beings that were all identical. Over the factory, how signed with one word, choices, zero degrees of freedom. How does one interpret such a dream? It depends on your horizon. You have to answer the three classic questions. Who am I? Where do I come from? Where am I going? Are you a deterministic piece of flesh controlled by genes and an environment, a consumer in a mechanized world? Or are you something more than material? Is consciousness just a froth bubbling up from brain chemistry? Or is there something more operating behind the observable limit? Can science answer this question? John Dunn said, Reason is our soul's left hand, faith or right. My name is to reach to the Beyond the quantum veil is nothing, or else everything. The potentiality of spirit began to manifest. My spiritual teacher spoke to all these third hand as a world of archetypes, blueprints yet to take form. To me, this is the world of potential beyond the quantum veil. There is room in my faith for a God to manifest the unknown, but for now it exists in his mind, unmanifested and unobserved. For now, so the way that it moved is not the absolute name. The names that have been given are not the absolute names. The origin of heaven and earth is the before names. Some things are only observable through faith. These things are now generally repeatable upon demand. Like synchronicity, they are a possible. A question of faith cannot be settled by research. But it's simple to a child. A child can see it. If you ask me as a scientist, I have to say I do not know. But I have seen it. I know. And for me, what I have seen confirms what others have seen. Is it verifiable? Only through the eyes of faith. Does this disprove it? In the universe of indeterminacy, I would have to say no. It is a mystery. And Jesus of Nazareth, according to your faith, be it unto you.